Hello, this video is going to examine uh, a little algorithm that IB seems to like, uh, which deals with um, some product roots of polynomials. It starts with uh, what we know about quadratics, um, and it basically says, look, suppose you have a quadratic equation, the roots, that is to say the solutions to the equation, are P and Q, then if you add the roots together, um, that's equivalent to taking your coefficient B over your coefficient A and making the opposite. The product of those two roots would be the same as taking the C divided by the A. It's a pretty trivial uh, result, and actually it kind of makes sense in some respects. If I go over the factoring algorithm, for example, um, and I factor this equation, expression, um, so that I can solve the equation, I end up with the factors x plus 2 and 2x minus 5. Thus, the roots are going to be 2 and 5, and negative 2 and 5 halves. If I were to multiply those roots together, I would get, give me one, I would get negative 5, and if I follow the algorithm that says multiply them together, it should be c over a. So I'm going to take c over a, which in this case happens to be negative 10 over 2, which is negative 5. So it works the same way. Now, uh, so the, uh, the reason why I said this kind of makes sense, uh, c over a, is because uh, this, the negative 10 and the 2 literally factor into coming up with the values that end up forming my roots. Um, but anyway, because I, I guess what I'm saying is, in the in the process of factoring, one of the first things I do is I multiply c times a in order to figure out what the factors are going to be. So it follows that the c and the a are going to follow or reason into the well, whatever. See it if you like it. Anyway, um, add the roots together, I get one half. Following the algorithm, if I take the opposite of the b value over the a value, which notice for quadratics, negative b over two a is the axis of symmetry, which is the average of the two roots the axis of symmetry is the average of the two roots, then negative b over a is the sum of the two roots. So again, that's logical. So, trying it out, negative, the opposite of b over a is in fact one half as well. Now, if we extend this idea into q, any polynomial, in this case I chose a cubic, but this works for any polynomials, any degree, um, I have this polynomial here. Um, I, I deliberately designed it to be factorable so that I can find the actual roots. If I add the roots together, I get 3. And if I take the opposite of 3, the opposite of negative 3 over 1, I get the sum of the roots. So again, it's consistent. If I multiply the roots together, I get negative 12, which if I take the opposite of 12 over 1, to, I'm going to get negative 12. Now, notice the product of the roots is sometimes going to be negative and sometimes going to be positive. Um, that is to say, we're going to take the opposite for all the odd polynomials, odd degree polynomials, and then we're going to take not the opposite for all the even degree polynomials. So it's an alternating kind of a series there. Anyway, um, so that's the sum and product of roots of polynomials and quadratics. Now, you'll notice this is a generalizable form of the previous statement um, here. So this statement doesn't have to be memorized necessarily because it is completely consistent with the statement here. If the polynomial is in fact quadratic, then um, the negative a sub n minus 1 over a sub n is just negative b over a. And here this is negative c over a, or just c over a, sorry. Now, those are the facts. IB loves, uh, for some reason, this little thing. I guess they're trying to figure out who's covering the whole curriculum or not. Uh, so they tend to ask questions that require you to know this. Um, in this specific instance, uh, they give you the quartic equation uh, that has real coefficients, and two of its roots are 3i and 3 minus i. Write down the other two roots, first of all, and then find the values of a and d. It just so happens, of course, when you look at the algorithm, d over 1 and uh, the opposite of a over 1. Uh, basically, the two things that we're trying to find out are things that re re emerge when we do the sum and the product of the roots. So here's the skinny. Um, if one of the roots is 3i, then negative 3i is also a root. These are conjugate pairs, and we know that in polynomials, the fundamental theorem of algebra says, um, first of all, that the power of the polynomial corresponds to the total number of roots, and then the corollary is any complex numbers that are roots of a polynomial are always going to be coming in conjugate pairs. So that means if uh, x equals negative 3i is also a root, then these are two factors, x plus 3i and x minus 3i are factors of that polynomial. 
Similarly, uh, we can say that if 3 minus i is one of the solutions, then um, 3 plus i is another root. So the part a is simply asking me to find the two roots that also have to exist if 3i and 3 minus i are there. I also put them into factor form because this is the way, if you didn't know the algorithm that I just shared with you previously, then you could still answer this question, but it would involve taking all of the linear factors and foiling them out. And then setting it equal to this particular expression. Now, if we FOIL all of this stuff out, we will, in fact, get all of the coefficients, including b and c. The problem is we don't need b and c. It's actually almost a distractor to some respect. And then to do all of this work is not wrong or difficult even. It's just tedious. And is, you're risking uh, errors here. One of the errors that's common is if 3 minus i is a root, some people will say x minus 3 minus i is going to be the factor, but others might get confused and say x plus 3 plus i, or I don't know. Some people get screwy confused about um, this concept. But you just simply, if your root is 3 minus i, then your factor is x minus 3 minus i. If your root is 3 plus i, then your factor is x minus the number 3 plus i. So keep in mind here, the conjugate pairs still exist, both subtracted from x uh, to become linear factors. Anyway, this is not a recommended way of approaching this. Since all we're looking for is a and d, let's use sum and product of roots. <clears throat> um, so basically, the negative or the opposite of a over 1, this is the a value, and take the opposite of negative a over 1. Um, Yeah, I think I, I made a mistake here. Let me fix this. It should be the opposite of negative a over 1, which is the opposite of negative a, and therefore a equals 6. Boom. Uh, my bad. And uh, continuing on, uh, if I take the negative 1 to the 4th, that's the degree of the polynomial, so it's going to be a positive uh, d value, or, yeah, whatever. Um, in other words, we don't take the opposite of the d value is what I was trying to say. And then we're going to multiply all four of these roots together, uh, keeping in mind they're in conjugate pairs. So 3i times negative 3i is going to be 9 times the square root of i, or times i squared. i squared is negative 1, so we get a positive there. And here we're going to get, when we follow that out, ultimately I guess I'm saying you should know your algebra by now. I'm just showing you what you need to do. d equals 90. So the a is 6 and the d is 90. Those are real coefficients as was prescribed. Um, and that's how I can utilize um, the sum and product of roots to help solve some of these contrived, albeit contrived, problems. This one, again, very contrived, very forced. Uh, but nonetheless, it requires that you can analyze what the question is trying to get at. So uh, essentially, it says uh, that there are two different kinds of resistors with two different resistances. Uh, they're put into a circuit with two different kinds of um, connections. Um, connected in series and connected in parallel. You don't have to be an electrician to understand all of this stuff. Just simply look at the definitions that are given. The resistance total when connected in series is the sum of the two resistances. If they're connected in parallel, then the reciprocal of R is equal to the reciprocal of the, uh, the sum of the reciprocals of the differences, or resistances. Holy cow, vocabulary today, huh? Anyway, the other thing that I know, and this is where the, uh, the application comes in, two of the resistors have resistances equal to the roots of the quadratic equation here. So talk about contrived. Why does that exist? Uh, just because it makes a neat problem. Find the total resistance in the circuit if they're connected in series or in parallel. So basically, uh, to connect in series, I need to know R1 and R2. And R1 and R2 are roots of this equation. To know the resistance in parallel, I need to know the reciprocal of R1 plus the reciprocal of R2. Once again, R1 and R2 are solutions to this equation, or roots of this equation. So here's an example where we can start with the sum and product of roots so that we can get some sort of knowledge about R1 and R2. If I multiply R1 and R2, it's going to be 4 thirds, and if I add R1 and R2, it's going to be 4. Setting up a system now, because we have two unknowns with two equations, I solve for R1, and I substitute this into R2, which creates a quadratic equation. I was a little, uh, first a little hopeful when I saw the quadratic that it was going to be nice and factorable, but lo and behold, it is not. So I will spare you the trouble, but I used the quadratic formula ultimately to get this result, uh, and that's actually plus or minus. I did a little exploration here, 
And uh, I found that if R2 is equal to 2 plus 2 square root of 3 over 3, then R1 is going to be 4 minus that, because of this. I found this fact right here. So I take 4 minus R2, and I get, well, I get the conjugate. Now, if I chose R2 to be 2 minus 2 thirds the square root of 3, then when I find R1, I get, in fact, the conjugate again. So it really doesn't matter which one is R1 and which one is R2. What matters is the fact that R1 and R2 are, in fact, conjugate pairs, which will make my work easier to answer part 2. Or to answer, yeah, I don't know. Answer part I, sorry. So, to answer part I, add the two R's together. And we'll find that the radical pieces subtract out, and we're just left with 4. So the total resistance when connected in series um, is 4. Connected in parallel, on the other hand, we need the reciprocal of R to be equal to the reciprocal of R1 and the reciprocal of R2 added together. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate here, top and bottom by the conjugate there, do some math magic, and end up with 144 over 48, which conveniently is 1, or is 3, and if 1 over R equals 3, then R equals 1 over 3. So that's uh, an IB style problem dealing with the sum and product of roots. So you don't, they're not going to come right out and say it, use sum and product of roots. You're just going to have to be aware that when you're looking at roots of a polynomial, just let a flag go up in your head and say maybe sum or product might be the way uh, to get this thing sold out. Again, here we have a problem that's in red, and I sometimes wonder why. Uh, but uh, it says that the uh, four roots are uh, p, 2p, 3p, 4p. And the first thing I notice is that is, in fact, a geometric, no, arithmetic progress or series, uh, because we just keep adding p every time. <laughs> we keep adding p. All right, so um, when I do that, I collect all the like terms. I get 10p equals the opposite of b, and b equals negative 10p. And what I'm trying to do is show 125e, uh, which e is a coefficient, not the number e, which I'm really not happy with. Uh, that's equal to uh, 3b to the fourth. I don't really care what that says because I know I'm going to get the right answer because it says show that. Uh, but I keep that in the back of my mind that that's what I'm trying to show. I'm trying to get an expression that has E, that coefficient, and B in it. But there are no P's. So um, I'm going to now use the sum algorithm. I'm also going to use the product algorithm. The product of all four roots turns out to be um, 24P to the fourth power, which is equal to E over A, and it's not opposite. So the E value, not the constant E, but the, well, not the, yeah, never mind. Uh, the coefficient E is equal to 24P to the fourth. Now, I want an expression with just P and E, or sorry, B and E in it. So I'm going to take this expression and solve for B, P rather, and then put that back into the other. And now I have an expression that just has E and B in it. And when I reduce and solve, I end up with the expression I was looking for. So I don't know that why it's a red problem. Um, I'm finding sometimes Cambridge is not the best source in the world. It's still the best I've ever seen for IB, but it has its own flaws. So uh, we'll work that out. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Please, please, please um, don't forget this as you sit for your IB exams because, like I said, every year I see at least one problem like this. And if you know the shortcut, it makes for an easy exercise. If you don't know the shortcut, it makes for a nearly impossible exercise in some instances. The last two examples illustrate that. Thanks for watching.